Hey YouTube, this is Southern Purple One. I wanna talk about having some gear that's set aside, ready to go, in case of a situation, be it nuclear fallout is in your area, uh, and I don't recommend you going outside, but a lot of you have purchased, you know, Tyvek suits or, or some type of rain suit to protect you from the actual dust particles. And a lot of people as a prepper have bought masks, either a full mask or a half mask with goggles. But whatever situation, try not to go outside. But it might be a situation that you have to go outside. Either you have to secure more food and water for your shelter uh, or you have to help a family member. And the danger is lower than... Uh, right after the attack and the radiation levels lowered. The only way to really know that though is to have a Geiger counter of some sort of a nuke alert. So without that, you're guessing. And I don't want you to guess, but let's say you have to leave your shelter. So you Tyvek suit up, mask up, you're ready to go, but you feel it's unsafe just to leave without a firearm and some basic supplies. So what I did, I had all this saved up. Um, when the military went away from the TA-50, the Alice, um, this stuff was so available. I mean, I probably could have got tons of this stuff for free. Guys that had their own, um, that were getting rid of it. I purchased lots of these for a dollar a piece at garage sales. So back then they were cheap. Now there's a comeback. I saw a, really a small kit like this for like $55. I couldn't believe it. But all this was in two file cabinet drawers. And what I saved it for was, first of all, for me, nostalgia. I love this stuff. I love it. Um, it, it accomplishes everything you need. So if this is what your primary gear is, you're probably better off than most guys because um, it's very simple. It's also nice because of the harness type system. You don't have a vest on, you don't have a plate carrier on, so it's gonna be very much uh, more enjoyable in the middle of summer in the south. Uh, this is cooler for you. Plus you can add very quickly, add more pouches and tailor it to what you need. The only negative about this is you don't have plates on, so it's not a plate carrier where you can slide plates in. But I would not feel outgunned in any sense. Uh, so if you were using this as your primary gear, uh, there's nothing wrong with this at all. But what I've done is, over time, you always buy more gear, get better gear. And I saved my old gear for a purpose. First, so I can give it away to people that don't have any. And I've given a lot. I used to have a ton of this after I got out of the military. Uh, and I've given a lot away because I didn't need it. And you can only store so much. And it's sad when you see uh, young guys starting out after they buy their first AR-15. They don't have a lot of gear. So it's a good pick-me-upper and a boost for them to just hand them some gear. And in reality, a lot of this stuff was a dollar a piece. Some of it was free. So it didn't cost me a lot to, to do an act of kindness. So I have, I had all this stuff in two file cabinets, but it wasn't put together. Cause I was like, eh, I'll let the guy, whoever needs it, you know, pick through and, and set his setup up. But I said, you know what? Let me set up two setups, one for me, one for my son that has the basics on it. And basically you basically got mags placed for your gun, your pistol, your first aid. You have a butt pack, which are really nice to carry all kinds of stuff. You got a canteen one extra spare magazine and three more mags so that overall i could fight my way out of most situations and most of the time instead of fighting i'll be uh getting out of dodge getting out of that uh, engagement because as a prepper i'm not u.s infantry so if i can run i'd rather run so i set up two one for nate and one for me now let's say i had to leave the shelter i probably wouldn't take this unless I was going to be you know off my property uh or i'm really seriously thinking there could be some trouble what i want you to think of is setting up some gear some of you might not have even primary gear and i'm sorry about that but if you do have extra gear laying around it might not be the best quality and it doesn't need to be you could even set up this very basic you got some water and you got three mags so if you're carrying an ar-15 and you have to leave your shelter uh, this will get you probably by. And the nice thing about this, I don't want you to put on your, your best gear, your plate carrier, all your cool gear, and then go outside in a contaminated environment and get it contaminated where you have to spend hours and hours and maybe a whole day taking it apart, cleaning it, scrubbing it, getting every piece of dust off of it because you don't want that gamma radiation 
uh, touching your skin and is going to be very radioactive. Um, it might not be as high, but if it's on your gear and it's sitting next to your chest for hours, that's not good. So having a piece of equipment that you can do what you need to do, and that way if you have to leave your improvised shelter or your real shelter, you can take this off at the at the entrance or put it in a secure place um, and not bring it into your shelter and then you will have your good gear ready to go for that emergency but you need something like this because this is easy I don't even have to decontaminate that if I didn't want to um, you know I just leave it outside that environment and go inside and save precious time and precious energy precious water uh, protecting myself and not wasting it on decontaminating. I, I know a lot of guys have a lot of cool gear and you don't want to have to take it all apart, hose it off, wash it off, uh, and, and not have it ready for when you need it. So this, this would have to be a really serious situation for me to put this on because there's a lot to decontaminate. But I have a lot of extra belts, lots of canteens, a lot of mag pouches. I could set a few of these up so if anyone had to leave the shelter, at least I know they'd have some basic stuff with them. And then when they get back, we don't have to worry about right now decontaminating that. Let's say you don't have any of the old TA-50. You can use anything, but what the plan of this video is, all right, you have your primary cool guy gear. Now, let's go through what you have. Don't go out and buy stuff. You could probably improvise a lot of things. Um, say you got some fanny packs, some butt packs. These would work fine. Now this one, this material is really soft and plush. Probably not what you want, a little harder to de decontaminate, but it would still be serve a purpose where you wouldn't have to decontaminate it when you get back to your shelter, be it a real shelter or an improvised shelter. Something like this that's really slick and waterproof, this would definitely be better. But this way, if you leave your shelter to do anything, you could have some basic stuff with you that you wouldn't have to worry about decontaminating as soon as you get back. So save that cool guy stuff and your better equipment for when you really need it. Uh, hopefully this helps. Don't go out and buy a bunch of extra gear. You don't need it. But just have in the back of your mind, if you have only one good set, don't get it decontaminated. Uh, just by going out of your shelter, you might be a farmer and you got to go out and check on some animals or check them in the barn, check on a neighbor, and still the environment is not 100% safe to stay out there for an extended period of time. Have some gear that is sort of sort of disposable for what, what we want to think about. I hope this helps. Just get a plan. The threat of nuclear weapons being used against us is so high. The Soviet, or excuse me, I see, I get in that mindset, the Soviet Union. It's not the Soviet Union. It is Russia, 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 Russia. We embarrassed the Soviet Union when they fell. We thoroughly embarrassed, and they will never forgive us for that. We rubbed a lot of salt in their wound when they fell. Russia totally believes. Uh, my first, one of my first papers in college, I wrote it on the inadequacies of the civil defense plan um, of the United States. Uh, comparing that to the Soviet Union. So I did a lot of research and I found out that most people over in Russia, now Russia, have a place to go. They literally have a place to go, be it the subway systems that are designed to withstand uh, nuclear war and save them from fallout, or, or huge public shelters. They have them. If you live in Atlanta right now, there is no shelter for you. There is nothing for you. There's no plan for you. Um, and, and that's what I did, and that was like 25, 30 years. It was forever ago. And it has gotten worse. It has gotten worse. We, we have no plan for civil defense in this country, and the, the Russians know it. They're going to take advantage of that. Um, they're going to take advantage of their doctrine saying they will win a nuclear war against the United States. And we're not really helping our cause, our, our government, our military, um, we've neglected our nuclear forces because we have relied upon our conventional forces so much. And really, it's the exact opposite in, in, in Russia. They're putting a heavy emphasis on their nuclear weapons. Um, and, and they've done a lot of improvements. They've had uh, a lot of new weapon systems and a lot of new nukes come out. Uh, they're not sitting just relying on things that are 30, 40 years old. They are actually doing and making better systems, uh, and they're going to use them. There's no doubt in my mind they will use them because they truly believe they can win it. And, and they have a civil defense plan for their citizens that backs it up. We have nothing. So get some 
primary gear ready to go and then get some gear that you wouldn't mind getting contaminated in an environment uh, so you don't have to clean it right away or you can just actually just let it decontaminate itself over many many days or weeks uh, of sitting there thanks for watching